most groomers make the mistake of doing is not moving our table enough. So if you're shorter and you have a taller table and you're, you're stretching your body, you're going to have a bad back real quick. So make sure that you're moving your table up and down in proportion to the size of dog you're working on is really important. All right, Tuts. Okay, so when I first start and I get a dog on my table that I'm not familiar with, and it's really easy actually to do it in the bathtub. When they're wet, you can see their structure better. So if I say I didn't bathe the dog I'm working on, I'll take and I'll feel their body structure. And she kind of dips a little bit in here, but she just might be really relaxed, so we just give her a little poke. And on, on poodles, you want to have a, a level top line, okay? And what I do is if I'm leaving a neckline, which that's this area, is I run my hand along the dog and where it naturally stops, this is the withers, okay? So on a poodle, structurally a balanced poodle, your neckline should stop here, but it should also be even with the back of the front leg, okay? So that's a well-structured dog. And if you have a client that's willing to maintain that neckline, then leave a neckline. It adds a little style and elegance to their cut. I know you see your mama somewhere. I don't know where she went. So that's what I do to all my dogs is I check their structure, I check their neckline. Um, if, again, my client's willing to maintain this and they're a regular client, perfect. I'll leave a nice little neckline on. And if, if I don't leave a neckline on, the occiput, which is this bone on the top skull, I'll go right behind that with my poodles. So, and I do a lot of five on the bodies with fuller legs, and I can still leave a nice top line. You just have to comb it up and blend it into that five. Um, some people will leave a V in the back here, just to add a little more style. It's all, it's preference, whatever your clients want. If you have a poodle that has a low tail set, which her tail set's a little low, you can shave a V up the back of their, their tail. And that's gonna give the illusion of a higher tail set. Okay, so you, you can use corrective grooming um, to make your dog look more stylized. And it, it's not any extra work than if you were to just shave the tail to the base. So, let's start taking some of this hair off. And I'm going to use our magnetic combs under a 30. Our magnetic combs are designed to fit over a 30 or a 10 blade. And what you do is this is set for a 30 and you just flip this over or it's set for a 10. It just depends on what you're comfortable with using. And you attach it teeth first and then you'll feel it, it'll snap down. Can you stand up, girlfriend? Yeah, thank you. So one last time, I'm gonna make sure that her back is combed out. She wears a thick collar, so her neckline might have some knots in it. Okay. And this is our um, newer cordless clipper. This is our five speed clipper. This is a Pulse CR. Again, this is lithium battery technology. You power it on on the side, and you power the levels up in front, or you can power it down. Um, this clipper will get through heavy-duty doodle coats. Um, it's, it's a great, powerful clipper. So again, I'm finding those withers, which are right there, and I'm just gonna come and I'm gonna take this off. And you want this to be straight, okay? So if you know that they dip, if they have either a roach back or if they dip, you can fill in and leave coat there. And yesterday I showed how to do a carry blue tail. So I'm gonna leave this hair there because eventually when I get this coat off, we're gonna do that again. 
And what you want to do to set your rear lines on your poodle is they have this hip bone here and they have a pin bone here. So you want to run from the hip bone, you want to come down off to that pin bone. And you can see I left a little hair there. And then where that pin bone is, is where you want to come down and you want to make this angulation nice and short. And the angulation on a poodle should stop where they naturally bend. And you can again do that on any dog. You can do that on a golden, on a golden doodle, you could do it on a Shih Tzu. Again, sometimes we have to create ang angulation on them and this is a great way to do it. By doing that area a little bit shorter than the rest. And I'm just gonna slowly skim down that leg. You want them to have parallel lines. So when you're looking at them from the rear, you shouldn't see it, this big hip on your dog. And I'm gonna take, and I, I, I have a one, a number one comb on. And I'm gonna take this short up to that angulation again. I'm gonna come and do this side. Up to where that angulation is. And this is a great way to set your lines right before you're gonna scissor. If you wanna practice scissoring on a dog, do this. What do you see? That's not your mom, it's not. I know. And then I come to the chest area and the neckline. And I'm gonna come straight down to the elbow. And I'm, I'm, when I get to this part, I'm not pressing in. I want the, this to be a straight line. So up here, I'm, I'm pressing hard. And then as I get down to here, I'm skimming. And you can go straight down that leg. And again, I'm just skimming. And this area can be nice and short. Poodle should have a chest, OK? And when you look at them, this pin bone, and if you run a line straight across, is where their, their breast bone should be. Some poodles is lower, some is higher, depending on the structure of the dog. So sometimes we have to build that little breast bone. So what I'm gonna do is come in here and do this area shorter. And this front of a poodle's leg can be shorter than the back of the leg. Okay, they should be square. So when you look at them from the profile, you should be able to see a box, a square box, a level top line, and this should come straight down and in the front as well. But you wanna give them that nice chest. So now we're starting to give her some chest. And I'm gonna skim this down the front of the front leg, the inside front of the front leg. And again, in my head, I know what I want my finished product to look like. So I want these parallel lines, I want columns. And if we were to take, again, my withers, so we wanna leave this so that the, the back of the front leg matches where the withers are, okay? And then if I was to take this tuck up off and pull all this back, that makes her look really, really long body. We don't want to do that. And what I do here is I skim this, again, to that natural bend, but towards the knee. And I'm just going to take this off towards the knee. You're okay. I know. That's not your mom. I promise. Okay, and once I get to this area, you have to remember poodles should be well rounded in the rib cage. When you look at them from the top, they should have a nice hourglass. So you can give them a waist in here. But you want to be afraid that you don't take this tuck up hair off. 
So if you have a poodle that's built really well and has this nice rounded rib, you could take this real short. I'm gonna come and get the armpit off. I'm gonna take this right up for belly. And this is what I like to call just blocking the dog in. And I'm gonna scissor the rest of this. Let's comb this up. And how we determine where their tuck up is, is their last rib. So right here is the last rib. So I'm gonna come straight down into that tuck up. And I'm at this point, I'm pressing really hard because I want to give her that nice, elegant look. And as I get into this area, I'm just coming forward because, again, I don't, I don't want to take any of this hair off. Sorry if I'm in anybody's way. And then I'm just gonna skim this. I'm not pressing hard here because I'm gonna blend that in with my shears. But the more I can get done with my clipper, the quicker I'm gonna be able to scissor this. You gotta remember not to take this too short because you, you don't wanna pinch the elbow there. Good girl. Yes, you're being a good girl. So I'm just gonna do this side real quick. For time's sake. And we are having a drawing at one o'clock. Right over here is our entry. If you guys wanna Fill it out. You do not have to be present. We will mail it to you. Um, everyone fill out. We're giving some tools away in a tote bag, I believe. So come on over and fill out one of our entries. It's a cute little tote bag with some grooming tools in it. And we'll also mail you one of our Andis Grooming 101 books. This book has great tips in it. It's not only for the beginner, um, but it's also, I keep it on my counter at my salon, and I let my clients, when they're waiting, kind of look through it, give some great little brushing tips, how to cut a toenail, just coat maintenance. It also has some really good structure, um, points in it. It's just a good little book. It's, an, it's a binder book. And we're going to develop, hopefully coming up soon, a grooming 102 and a 103. So it's exciting. And we've developed um, Andis Grooming College also, where I think this entry will register you for Andis Grooming College. And what we'll do is we'll Annis will send one of us educators out to your salon to have a lesson. Whatever your salon wants to work on, um, which is really exciting. It's a very minimal fee. So that's really good. We're really gearing and focusing on education. Of course, we, we love our products and want you to buy our products, but we're here to educate new groomers and to help you learn. Okay, Kona, you're doing good. And again, what am I doing right now? Bending over what I shouldn't be. And I have this nifty table that's really easy to raise up 
and even an experienced person like me makes those mistakes and my body's paying for it now. So don't make those mistakes. Okay. Let me see how you look. And another really important thing is, is to actually step back and look at your dog. If, you know, we spend so much time on top of them. If you can put a mirror up in your salon, it would be great. Because you can see so much from standing back just a foot. Okay, and don't be afraid to change your blades as well. So if you're scared you're gonna to take too much off the chest, change to a longer blade. That's how you're gonna experiment and try different blades. Uh, if you have a dog that gets a seven and all off, but it has a really, really nice coat and you wish that your client would let you practice on it, book, book less t more time for that dog and practice on the dog first and then shave it off. If you have time in your day and you can do that, that's what I did and that's how I learned how to use different blades on different dogs. And it really does help. You had a lot of hair. Yes, you did. Okay, let's move this out of the way. And move this out of the way. So I'm really, really particular about hair on my table. I see so many groovers trying to do a round foot and they have all this hair around the foot. And how can you possibly see what you're doing with all the hair? So after I get most of the hair off, I'm going to take and I'm going to clean off my table. It's like an artist with a clean canvas. We want to make sure that we get all of this hair off. And if I was at work, I would just blow it off. But we don't want to do that here. OK. I'm going to give it a quick comb through again, get all this flyaway hair off. And notice I didn't take my spray bottle because I like to use my spray bottle as a finishing spray as well. What is spray bottle? This is Crown Royale. It's called, it's a conditioning spray. This is called, it's called Magic Touch. Yeah, they're actually selling it in the um, Groomers Pro booth. See those flags up there? Yeah, this is Formula 3. Okay, is this, you know, the waterless uh, conditioner? No. This is not waterless. It's just conditioner. It's dilute. Yeah, I buy the concentrate bottle and dilute it. Dilute it. So yeah. With water? Yeah, with water. But you want to be careful whenever you dilute something with water. You don't want it sitting around. So if you're not going to use, like, I started off Friday with this, and I'm going to use this b bottle by today. They say three days when you dilute something with water, it starts to form bacteria in it. So you have to be careful. So if you're, you're not sure, use a smaller bottle. OK. okay? So No, no, I'm just, <laughs> you're like, you don't want to do this. I just, this is just a light mist. Okay, just a mist, yep. So I missed everything, give it a comb. Now I'm gonna lower my table again. Because I wanna make sure that I'm above my dog when I'm scissoring. My mic fell off. Too many cords and wires here. Okay. So it's important to be on top of your dog when you're scissoring. And let's give her belly a little poke up because she's nice and relaxed. So she's dipping and we want to have that level top line. And I'm going to take my straights. 
and we're yeah. Well, you have to use the conditional bottle to make a. Uh, you don't have to use it any spray. Why you use that? I spray? use the spray when I brush because it adds elasticity to their coat. So it helps brush through and it fluffs them up. So I like the conditioner for that, and then I use it for scissoring. That's how you get that nice, smooth, velvet look. So I go to the platform that places conditioner, what's the name? Magic Touch number three. So we want this level top line. So I'm gonna come in and start scissoring. And you can see I'm holding my sheer straight, but nothing is coming off here. So what I'm gonna do is take this a little shorter because we want this to be level. And again, she dips a little bit right in the middle. And I'm gonna comb it again. And I give it another mist comb it again. And this might see, re, seem redundant, but it really does give that nice finish look. And right now I'm going to hold her tail down because I want to cut this a little shorter right here. So now I have this part as short as here. And I'll come from this direction as well. And this is what we call a carry blue tail. Carry blues get this tail. It's nice if you have a dog that has a low tail set and, and there's a dip here. A lot of dogs will dip here. You can leave this fuller, this type of a tail on this dog. So you're not accentuating that. No, you gotta stand, honey. I know. You gotta stand. <laughs> what? You don't want me to do that? So I'm gonna cut this down shorter. And this shape should be a carrot shape. But not a point at the end. A lot of people think that and I'll take my shorter curves because I want to curve up here. I think the terrier's tail should be pointy like a carrot. It's, it's not. It's rounder. Give me this tail. Rounder at the tip. And again, I want to comb and use my straights. So I, I, I like to part the tail in the middle. And so whatever hangs off on this side, I'm just going to cut a straight line and this side as well. And it should be thicker at the, the base of the tail than at the tip. And sometimes she's curling her tail this way, so I'll just poke it out, poke it up like this. And there's not too much more I have to take off because I did some yesterday. And then you want to make sure that you comb. <laughs> Don't touch my tail, you're okay. Comb this down so you get all the underside off. And I actually shaved up her tail a third way with a 7F blade yesterday when I was doing it. Okay. So we're gonna to start to cut in her, her angulation here. And the way that I, I figure out the angulation is I, I find her hip bone, which her hip bone's right here, and again, this pin bone. And I'm gonna come in at a 30, 30 degree angle, pointing the tip of my shears at that hip bone. And I always hold their tail up. And 
And this type of a haircut is not ideal for an older dog or a puppy. This is, this is the type of haircut that's ideal for a dog that is going to stand really well for you. You want to make sure that you're adjusting your haircuts for the age of the dog. I have people that come in with their, their six-month-old puppy that has never been on a grooming table before and want me to do this glorious haircut, and it's just not possible. So I work with them and let them know that grooming is learned behavior just like anything else that they're trying to do. So then where this pin bone is is where I start my angulation coming down. And now I'm pointing my shear at that natural bend in the leg and you can get your curves. And you're gonna come in and start taking this and this area can be rather short. Especially if you have a dog that doesn't have any angulation and is really, really straight in the rear. And I'll comb this up from the hock up and I'll come this direction to again that, that point. And then you can see we have this starting this nice angulation in the back. And I'm gonna comb this all up and stand and look behind my dog and see what needs to come off. So I'm gonna follow this around and I'm gonna go straight down to my table. And whatever comes off, comes off. It's not. But I've already set my line with my clipper so I know how much I need to take off. That's why it's nice to use your clipper and your comb attachments because it's less scissoring. Okay, and then again, our, our tuck up is at the last rib, and we can give them a waist. So I'll take my curves and reverse them this direction. And I even think this can be a little bit shorter. And if you felt this, this is probably as short as like a 4F blade. And I'm going to do the same thing on the inside of the leg. I'm going to take my straights and I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to go straight down. And whatever comes off, comes off my straight line. I'll come from this direction and clean it up. Again, I'm using that straight parallel line in my head that I see. And then I'll come and I'll get this area as well. Give it another comb. And again, with my parallel line, come straight down. You gotta stand up. Yeah. Do you have a question? No. Okay. So my hocks, I'll part my hocks in, in half, part them right down. And whatever whatever's sticking out, this line I already have started, you can see, I'll just take this off to match up those lines. Same on the inside. And on this side, I did my bevels with my blade. On this side, I did it with my scissors. So now, as I'm just coming up this direction, and I'm gonna comb this, and poodles should have a knee. They should have a nice knee. So I'll take my curves this way with her leg out like this, and I'll come in, and I'm pointing them at the knee. Come on this side as well.
Comb it again. Give it a little shake. And I'll check this again. Okay, so then I'll come this way. And her knee's right here. So you can kind of see we're starting to have that nice knee. I did a 30 on her feet, and then when I did my bevel, I did a 30 as well. So, I don't think you were here earlier for the bevel. So, how I did my bevel was I pull all this hair down and take with a 30 and just go straight across with all the hair around. And then when I'm doing them with my shears, I comb it all down. And I'm just tinching it up from what I had earlier. Stand up, honey. So many shortcuts. Yes, it's little things that really help us work smarter and not harder. So now I'm going to come and round my bevel in the front of the foot. And I'm paying attention to this inside part of the leg. Because when I look at from this direction, I want to have a column as well. So I'm going to come this way, change to my straights. And I'm going to follow that line straight down. <laughs> 